Hi there, and we're here at the making of Harry Potter. We're about to go inside and go through the tour of the Harry Potter studios. I can't wait, I'm a massive Harry Potter fan. I've been here once, I think about eight years ago, and I've heard a lot's changed, so I can't wait to see the changes. I can't wait to see the props. Now, I'm not a massive fan of Harry Potter, but what I do love is the immersion that the Wizarding World does bring from Universal Studios all the way across to here at the Warner Brothers tour. I absolutely love getting immersed within the Wizarding World. So follow us for a magical exploration of behind the scenes of the Wizarding World. Welcome to Hogwarts. So, gentle push for me. Gentle push. There we go. Well done. So, come on in, everyone. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. So this is indeed the Great Hall. It was one of the first sets ever built for the films and also, as you can tell, one of the largest. It stood for more than 10 years in a soundstage just to the left-hand side. And as you can see, we have dressed it up for the festive feast. So here we have the costume design section. So this is all of the costumes and wigs that they would have worn in the film. So this is Luna Lovegood, her makeup. It's got George Weasley's, Fred Weasley's. Excuse me, am I allowed to ask you for a secret? What's, can I, can you tell me a secret? Because yeah, I was told to sure. ask you. Yeah, um, I can actually show you something. Okay. Have a look in here. There's two of them in there, I'll try and separate them. But these are some of Harry's scars. Oh really? In the box, yeah. Oh my God. It's a thin piece of latex. They would have stuck one of them onto Dan's forehead. Yeah. It should have lasted him one entire filming day. But really? But if you have a look, the makeup artists actually have a little sticky note right here for him to see. We love Dan, and he doesn't pick his scar off. <laughs> um, because he was about 11 and he wasn't used to wearing makeup, you know, he was, right. he was a kid. Um, so yeah, he would sometimes scratch it off, it would fall off, he'd have to go get it replaced. Um, so between Dan and all of his stunt doubles, roughly around 6,000 scars. There was no official count, but that's the, the Oh my estimate. goodness, yeah, by, that is a lot of scars. Them. I know, <laughs> a lot of them. But yeah, you can even see these two little um, moulds up here. Their moulds of Dan's forehead. Really? It's just so that they can get the scar to look the same size and shape every time for continuity. Oh my god, um, that's the top hilarious. one is slightly broken. Oh, right. Apparently, Dan sat on it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> Bit of a disaster, Tiles, but you gotta love him, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's Harry Potter. He's Harry Potter, he's kind of important to the story. Yeah, he could do what he wants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you very much. You are very welcome, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. There you go, we just got told a secret. And that was about the most interesting thing I've heard so far today. Not 
got this is um, the bubbles from, I'm pretty sure, the prefect's bathroom. That's uh, where Harry cracks the secret of the golden egg in the second task of the Triwidder Tarn. Cedric Diggory was a prefect and he let him use the prefect's bathroom to decode the egg's clue. And this is a prop from that scene. As you can see, all the different coloured water and um, bubble bath is uh, magical. And it created magic bubble bubbles that Harry had a lot of fun playing in, apparently. And now that you're here, walking onto the same sets we've used for all these years, I hope that you too can feel a little bit of that magic. One of the fun things you'll see here today is that many of the interior sets were all built on the same roof. So Dumbledore's office was sometimes back to back with the Weasley Burrow. So this is the uh, the bedroom of Harry, Ron, Neville, Seamus, Dean, and Neville. I can tell which one's Dean Thomas's bed straight away. Yeah, yeah there's Neville on bottoms there, there's Harry Potter's, there's uh, Ron's, but where's Seamus? I ain't got one. Seamus would have slept while I'm standing. So, oh, she all right, Seamus would have been standing. Fair enough, yeah, that makes sense. Well, there's Dean Thomas, because he's got the West Ham cover. Yeah, yeah. That's never long bottom because you can see the NL at the bottom. Yeah. Now, who was that one there? Can't really see it. Yeah, Ron Weasley. Ron Weasley. Can't see the writing very clearly in this lighting, but it is there. It's really cool. The Slivering Common Room where Draco, Malfoy, and Co would have hung out on a regular basis. Honestly, some of these sets, you forget how good they are. I've only been here once before and it was about 10 years ago. But, like, I think that's Crab and Goyle. I'm not sure. There's Malfoy, yeah, that's Crab and Goyle. Okay. Tom Felton was a cracking Malfoy, I'm not even gonna lie. Looks underneath the lake. That's why it's got a greenish tint to it, apparently, uh, according to the book. Mirror of Erised. Did you know that Erised is desire backwards? So this is the mirror of desire. Harry's invisibility cloak and Ron and Hermione's general outfits. This must be the Gryffindor common room. And look, got the Christmas tree up. Santa Claus is coming to Hogwarts. Dumbledore's office, and that is Dumbledore's front door there to his office. All of these are old headmasters that have died. Why are they all asleep? Why are they don't talk to us, you know what I mean? Why are they all asleep? Because that's what they do. They sleep all day. We're muggles, actually. All the memories swimming around. This is what you want, isn't it? Yeah, this is literally what you want. It was also a pork key. Look at the detail in that one. It's amazing. Yeah. Got dragons on it. it exactly. So this is Tom Riddle. And the R Flab Prince. Wearing this horrible blazer. Honestly, it's disgusting. Why do young old wizard generations always wear suits? Like they, they never wore suits, they always wore wizard's robes. Armour for a house self. It's obviously a troll, isn't it? Yeah? Trolls going to war in that. Look at so it's Snake. Oh, 
Oh, and the little ball around. It looks smaller in this than it does in the films. Look at his up, man. Look how clotted it is. You call me a hoarder. Agrid's a hoarder of cages. Why has he got so many cages and baskets hanging on him? Because he looks after all the animals in the forest. Great Hall guys, that is the actual floor used in the film of Harry Potter. So Daniel Radcliffe has actually walked along that floor. And then Dumbledore's telescope up there is one of the most expensive things used in the filming of Harry Potter because it's got parts of an actual telescope inside. Really? It's used about three or four seconds of all the films. Really? Three or four yeah. seconds yeah. and it was and the most it was expensive thing. Most expensive thing, one of the most expensive things, and it's only featured about three or four seconds across all the films. Yes. Look at that, the quaffle. Two bludgers and a snitch hidden behind that little compartment there. What position would you like to be if you're on a Quidditch team? Oh, uh, I'd probably be a beater. Beater? Yeah. Goalkeeper. Goalkeeper? Yeah. Smash them away, boom! The Firebolt. Nimbus 2000. What's the best one, do you reckon? Looking. Top one. Really? The fire. No, the bottom one. Bottom one. Bottom one. Yeah, no. It's the door. Do you know how to say it, Aaron? <laughs> it's something like that. But yeah, open pretty, sesame. Pretty much. Open and look, it's worked. He's opened it. No, he's closed it. Locked it. Oh yeah. Oh, no, he's, no, he's open. That's good. Oh, though, that is it? so cool. Just does the bottom one. So you can see how it would work. Axel, remember, yeah. I told you that Mad Eye Moody was locked in his trunk. Yeah. There it is. What, inside all of them? Inside so all inside them. the seventh one, it's like a pit, and he was in that for months. Months? How, how did he survive? Months? The death eater fed him. So he could steal his hair. Yeah, I've got the mirror at the top though. Because I think, yeah, look, you can see Mad Eye Moody in it. the borough? Where? It's the borough. It's where um, the, the borough. Yeah, the Weasley's house. Look, and it's interactive, so if you press this, it starts washing the pan by magic. Ta-da! So it's stuck now. Look here. Wave your hand. And voila. You've got magic. Or as we in the mugger world call it, technology. This is the Malfoy Manor scene. <sighs> about to eat the, uh, they're about to eat the Muggle Studies teacher. Look. Well, they are the snake is. Look at the size of the game. Shades of pink, Dolores Umbridge.
There's Voldemort there. We do all the one, that's from the definitely our old part through. That's Voldemort, Sean. Why has he got Dumbledore's robes on? He's not got Dumbledore, he's, he's got his own robes on. And those, that's with the actual one wore by him. Wow, they must have turned the contrast down well, though. Well, yeah, well, he looks green he there. He green there, but on there, it's right in front of him. It's white. It's gray, yeah, it's still. Okay. You may recognise this outfit here. It's quite a famous outfit worn by Daniel Radcliffe himself. It is from the Deathly Hallows Part 2. During this scene, Harry meets Voldemort in the Forbidden Forest to sacrifice himself. Where are we? We're friends of Hagrid. one by one and they are actually coconut hairs and broomstick fibres. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> that would have took years. So it took 50 hours, a team of 15 people. Wow. So not years. Coconut. I was exaggerating, Sean, to make coconut your Coconut hairs, yeah. So he's essentially just a big giant coconut. <laughs> That's a good one, though. I like that one. Platform nine and three quarters with a life size scale of the Hogwarts Express. Right now we're queuing to go on to the Hogwarts Express. Yeah. This is the set that they filmed on. Yeah. Or is that a replica? Well, no, 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 this is the this is the actual set. Okay, yeah. set and that's why they would have filmed all the green scene stuff. So the Ministry of Magic stole this from Muggles. This train. Any questions, or is that what you need to do? Axel. No questions. Because it was getting too obvious. What do you mean getting too obvious? Why were they flying cars? All the flying boots, brews and stuff from all over the country. Yeah. Yeah, it is the invisible cloak. Hey, they been from the trolleys. What those scabbers? Yeah, they're not. The scabbers are the number one. Mina Lima, the graphic design team behind the movies of Harry Potter. Although that's pretty good, that. <laughs> that Look at them sticky trainers. Next time Adhere to anything. It's like an invention from like the 80s or 90s that you'd see on TV for kids, yeah. do you know what I mean? It is it's never gonna work, but it's a cool thing. Well, that's a drag wizard. <laughs> right, we're here at the halfway point. We've just gone through the massive set pieces that they have for a majority of the books, majority of the films, I should yeah. say. We've been and in the Hogwarts Express. Yeah, we've been in the God's Lair. Yeah, that's right. New part, I've not seen that before. It's really good. Very immersive. All I can say right now is that it's so fascinating. Like you can't pick a favourite bit at the moment because all of it has just been so fascinating. This bit outside that we're going to come up to next has got River Drive, it's got the night bus. Yeah, so let's go there and check it out.
any set that was made in Harry Potter only made to withstand that team and that team.